We are in our study in the book of Colossians and uh, we are nearing the completion of this study of this book. And uh, I hope and I pray the study of this book is encourage, uh, helping you in your walk with the Lord. Today we will be looking at Colossians chapter number 4, verse number 5 and 6, verse number 5 and 6. Many times we have these things of saving times, you know. Today, uh, when you watch television, when you read the newspapers, there's all these things going on. Save electricity, save water, and save uh, the trees. And the Bible tells us, redeeming the time. Redeem the time. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, we, uh, we, we do a lot of things to save time. Like, for example, you know, um, if you want to watch a cricket match, you try to finish all your works before in time, so you can go and sit before the television, so you can watch a, watch the cricket match. Or you want to do something, you want to attend a, uh, some kind of function, you try to... And, and in order to reach in time, what you try to do is finish all your works in time so you can go and attend the function. Right? What we are trying to do is, we are trying to redeem the time. Adjust the time. Save the time. Make up for something. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, verse number uh, 5 and 6. The Bible encourages us to walk in wisdom. And to redeem the time. We will look into the word of God today as we uh, study these two verses as the Lord bring, uh, teaches us. May I request men of God and women of God. Would you please stand as we honor the word of God as we read verse number 4 and 5. The Bible says, walk in wisdom. Toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how we ought to answer every man. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? Our dearest loving Heavenly Father, we pray for a fresh anointing this morning. We pray for a fresh oil this morning to be anointed upon each one of us. Father, there are times that we do things foolishly. And we are admonished in the scripture to redeem the time. And to walk in wisdom to them that are without. Teach us today. Help us, O oh God. Give us few thoughts today. Give all of us a receptive heart and an alert mind. I pray that thou will fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Give me the words of utterance, O Lord. Cover me behind thy cross, so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom. Toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt. That ye may know how we ought to answer every man. The Lord, as we read the book of Colossians. This is a book that... Uh, Encourages every Christian to have a Christ-like character. Yours and my attitude every day should be, Lord, teach me to be like you. Help me to be like you. May my walk and my talk be like you. May my walk and my talk bring glory and honor to thy name. 
The Bible admonishes and encourages us not to remain as a child sucking the milk, but admonishes to grow up to be a matured man eating strong meat. And so this should be our desire to grow. The Bible tells us to walk in wisdom toward them that are without. How do I walk in wisdom? By the way, what is wisdom? And we read the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? What is the fear of the Lord? Can you please come with me to the book of Proverbs while your uh, finger is there um, in the book of Colossians? While we turn to Proverbs chapter 8, what is the fear of the Lord? And the Bible teaches us over here in Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 13. What is the fear of the Lord? His fear of the Lord is to run away like a thief runs away from the police. No, it's a reverential fear. I fear God because I love Him. I fear God because I honor Him. But what is that fear? Is that fear that escapes is the beating? No. The Bible doesn't say so. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 verse number 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That is wisdom dear friends. That is the fear of God. To hate evil. When you get saved you have a new relationship. With sin. The things that you love to, love to do. Now you hate. You have a new relationship. With sin. You hate it. I know the flesh is yet strong. The flesh tries to pull us down. And the flesh persuades to do this. It puts this lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. But yet your spirit and your soul hates that. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. Can you just lower the volume? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And what is that evil? What is evil in the sight of the Lord? The Bible says pride. Pride. And we all can say, oh, I have a bit of pride in me. I have a bit of pride in me. I don't think anyone can say, I am the most humblest person. No, 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 only Christ. Only Christ is humble. Even Moses who was known as the meekest man as mentioned in the book of Acts failed. He even perverted the word of God. God gave him these ten commandments. He came, he saw the people dancing before the idol. What he did? He broke it. Then God tells him, speak to the rock, the water will flow. He smote it. Not trying to do what God is saying. Why all these things? Pride. There was only one who was meek and humble. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate? God hates such attitudes in our lives. And this is the fear of the Lord that you begin to hate what God hates. Fear of the Lord is not running away from God. Fear of the Lord is to hate evil, what God hates. Now that is wisdom. The Lord says, walk in wisdom. 
Walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. The people who are not saved. Who are watching our life. You see, you can be the president of India and, and live in sin and, and, and no problem. You can be a great, a famous celebrity, live in sin, no problem. No one is going to say anything about it. But if you are a Bible believing Christian, if you are a believer, or if you are a servant, if you are a servant of God, and you do one thing wrong, you are exposed. And the Bible tells us to walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Why? Why? The Bible tells us, for the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number um, 16, will, uh, as we read here, the Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We are living in an evil world. We are living in the time of evil. We are called to do, walk with wisdom. With those who are not saved. Redeeming the time. How do I redeem time? What do I do to redeem time? Well, God says I need to walk in wisdom. Which means I need to, I need to hate what God hates. Pride, arrogancy, fraud mouth. Because the world is watching you and me. And if they are seeing us as a prideful man and woman, as arrogant man and woman, as a man and woman with a fraud mouth, they don't want to do anything with us. If that is Christianity, I'm better off with my religion. That's what they say. The Lord says, hey, I want you to live in such a way and when, while the unbelievers watch you, they ought to know that you are different from them. And so you redeem the time. You don't, you don't try to get involved in the things that are worldly. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. So how do I redeem the time? What do I do in these evil days? What do I do while, while I'm surrounded and I'm bombarded with all this wickedness around the world? What is Bible telling me? How as a Christian, what should you do in these evil days as a Christian? How do you obey this scripture? When you are bombarded on the television with all the wickedness or on the billboard while you walk with wickedness and while you, while you read your newspaper, all that you read is evil. Can you turn with me to book of Romans chapter 13? Romans chapter 13, the Bible tells us to walk honestly, to walk in light, walk in wisdom, walk honestly, be honest, be sincere. It's okay to lose something by saying the truth. It's okay to lose something by speaking the truth. God is glorified. Verse number 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's time to wake up. If you want to redeem the time, then you need to wake up. While you are sleepy in your spiritual life, you are not redeeming the time. You are wasting your time. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. 
For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Speaking about the rapture. It's very close. The Lord is coming soon. My dear friends, when the Lord comes, where will you be found? In which place? What would you be doing when the Lord comes? Will the Lord be glorified? One day I preached a message on alcohol and one old elderly man came up to me. Hey brother, it's okay man. Jesus turned the water into wine. It's okay to drink. I'm saying, hey brother, when the rapture comes, you'll be sitting with your fanny bottle. Imagine you going up with a fanny bottle in cloud. That knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Imagine if Paul wrote at that time. How much more closer we are today. A lot of people have given up on faith. Because the Lord said he's coming and is not coming. He's not at come. And I told you why. The Bible tells us why he's not come. His patience, so that many more will come to repentance. And the first and the second reason is that you are still sleeping. And the Lord is waiting that you will be awake. The first reason is that the Lord, the Lord is patient and He is waiting patiently that many will come to repentance. The second reason is Christians are not yet ready for Christ. Dear friends, are you ready for Christ today? You ready? Look at what's happening around the world, even among Christianity. We have taken a compromising step. We have taken a step backward uh, just to get involved with the world. So we can be on the modern trend. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Because it's easy to walk like the world. But it takes daily sacrifice, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord daily to walk as Christ walked. Now Christ is not making Christian life as difficult. Sometimes I have met several Christians, when you, when you just sit with them or talk with them or just spend some time, you know they are walking with the Lord. Or sometimes you read some of their books or listen to some of their sermons or just, just spend some time with some, some old ladies or just talk to some older man and you know they are walking with the Lord. And they make it feel like it's very easy. So Christian life is not destroying your fun. Christian life is not trying to make it difficult to you. The Lord, is say, the Lord says, cast your burden upon me. And I will give you rest. 
all ye that labor and are heavy laden. There's a request and a command and an invitation and a welcome. Come to me. All ye that labor and are overburdened. And I will give you rest. Cast your care upon the Lord, for He careth for you. I can redeem the time. You can redeem the time by making a decision and a commitment every day. No matter what, I am not going to allow someone else to hurt my joy in the Lord. And it takes decision every day. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be honest. Not with eye pleasing. Not with man, as a man pleaser. But as I am to the Lord. Every day. Every day decisions. Every morning when I wake up. In my personal prayer. I, this, I, I pray this prayer. That is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse number 8. And this has become one of the most favorite prayer of my life. <clears throat> Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither the riches nor poverty. You know the, what the Bible says? I'll read for you. Word by word. It's a beautiful prayer. Proverbs chapter 30. Verse number 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee. And say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. What a great prayer. A prayer of dependence upon God. You know the greatest weapon or the technique of the devil is what? To make you believe that you can live an independent life from God. The moment you reach to that place where you begin to understand that I can do everything without God. Satan got you. You have books today in Christian bookshops. Written by Joy Osteen. I am. I believe in myself. I got everything in me. Joy is mine. Paula White. It's all new age religion that had crept inside Christianity today. But this prayer teaches us to depend upon God every day. Lord, I don't want to be so rich. Because if I become too rich, I'm going to say, I don't need anything now. I don't need God. I will deny Him. And Lord, I don't want to be poor. That go around stealing and doing all things that will hurt your cause. Give me sufficient for every day. That I may be dependent upon you day by day, day by day. That is the greatest thing the devil wants you to hold on to. That you can be independent from God. That's dangerous. So walk in wisdom. May people see and, 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 and pe let people know. There's something this person, he doesn't compromise. 
Look at the way that he or she is living, redeeming the time. They are not among us. And as a Christian, why should we redeem? Because the days are evil. Redeeming straight out of things that will destroy your faith in the Lord. It takes decision, dear friends. It's, it's easy to it's easy to do whatever we please because that's what our f- flesh wants to do. It's easy. But you'll pay a great price one day if you compromise. It takes every day to carry a cross. It takes courage to carry a cross every day and follow him. Because this is discipleship. There are many Christians in the world, very few disciples in the world. Sadly, that is what we look at in the world today. But that is not what the Bible says. When you read the book of Acts, you'll find the disciples were known as Christians first at Antioch. You see that? Today we look at the Christians, they are, they are disciples. No, 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 no. The disciples were known as Christians. Why? Because they... Followed Christ and the world saw. And they are the one who gave this name as Christians to the followers of Christ. Christians never call themselves as Christians. Christians never call themselves as Baptists. It is the enemies who call those Christians as Baptists. It is the enemies who call those followers as Christians. Because they watched, oh, they are following Christ. Even after Jesus Christ resurrected and went from, and he was not here in the flesh, the world, the world was noticing these people. And the, and the Bible says, and the disciples were first called as Christians at Antioch. We are living in a world today where Christians are not considered as No, 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 no. Biblically, the disciples are Christians. Are you a disciple? Will the world look at you and just like they said, this guy is a Christian. How do we carry a Bible, by the way? Are we ashamed of our Bible? How do we Introduce ourselves. Are we ashamed to call ourselves the tag that is put upon us as Christians? Redeeming the time. For the days are evil. Walk in wisdom with them that are without. Dear friends, just imagine if we all, if we all make this commitment to the Lord and say, Lord... Wow, I just, the rest of my life, I want to live in such a way that puts a smile on your face every moment by my life. And this will be like a sweet smelling savor rendered and offered to God every day in his altar. Just imagine every day you wake up and present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Every morning you make a decision and a commitment. Yes, you will have valley experience even in this time. But don't you remember? The Lord says, lo, I am with you always. That he will not forsake you. Nor he'll leave you. I had a student who come for admission in the Bible college. And his father sent him for Bible college. They said for the admission and... And we were talking, and he was asking if the college is affiliated to with any organization or anything. I said, no, we are not affiliated. We are independent, and we're just affiliated with the Bible, and we teach the Bible here. He said, uh, Pastor, but I heard that you are sending students to America after graduation. <laughs> I don't know who is spreading this rumor. I myself have never been to America. And I don't long to be in America. My heart, my passion, and my soul is for India. 
While people from America are coming to do missionary work in India, Indians have burden for America now. <laughs> Amen? Every Bible college student today have a dream. I want to go to America. Souls are dying and perishing in India. I said, sorry. I, if I'm sending students to America, I'll be having one of the largest college in India. <laughs> And so he called his father and his father said, Son, you're wasting your time. Come home. <laughs> so he went yesterday home. No, we don't send any students to America. My desire, you know what? That, that you will preach and you will be buried in India. Amen. And if the Lord calls you to America, I have no problem. If the Lord calls you to why is that the Lord is not calling Indians to Pakistan? Or why is that the Lord is not calling people, Indians to I I Iran? Redeeming the time. I don't know, whoever is spreading that rumor that I'm sending students to America... And so, I was telling, it's not about career. This college is not about career. It's about the calling. It's about the calling. Are you called? If you're looking for a certificate with golden seal, if that is all you're looking, then God has not really called you. We give the knowledge that the Lord has imparted to us. We teach and preach the Bible. And what you need in the ministry is not a paper with a golden seal. You need knowledge and you need wisdom and you need zeal to go out into the world and preach and win soul and plant an independent Bible-believing Baptist churches. Amen. Souls are dying. God wants you to have this zeal. God wants you to have this passion. And the knowledge. Lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. If you get a certificate without the knowledge, you will be destroyed in the mission field. You don't need a certificate. You need knowledge of the word of God. And you need a vision. Where there is no vision, people perish. You need a vision. I really get encouraged sometimes when I talk to these preacher boys. Someone has a desire to go to Bhutan and preach. But there, Christians are not allowed to do a mass evangelism and open evangelism. And there's 10, 12 people inside a room just worship the Lord without making a noise. That's all. They cannot make a noise. People will be thrown out of the country. And there are two guys over here who are thrown out of their countries. Because they are Christians. And they live in the border now. Redeeming the time. For the days are evil. Dear friends... Walk in, walk honestly. Presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice every day. Lord, you help me. Help me. It takes a commitment and a decision every day to walk a walk of worthy. Before we close... Consider your ways. Consider your ways. You want to 
Redeem the time for the days are evil. Consider your ways. How is your life? What is your focus? We went yesterday in the evening after having this Hindi prayer service. We went to visit a family because I heard somebody died. So we went and we are visiting that family. There was a picture of this man who died. And there was a little mud, and in that, a little uh, lentils were thrown, and it had sprouted up. And there was this bottle of fanny, because he was drinking, he loved it. And there was a box of, box of four square cigarette, they all kept it for him. Who's going to change all this? Who's going to change all this? Last Friday when we were witnessing, we met one guy and, and um, um, I think Anindo was, began to talk to him and, and asked him, do you know about Jesus Christ? Have you heard about... He said, no, I never heard about Jesus. In Goa! Never heard about Jesus Christ. Eshu Masih ke baare mein suna nahi. Then he began to share the gospel and then I was there and then I began to share the gospel and, and he began to nod in agreement and took the gospel tracts and, and uh, I don't know what, what is happening with him but we sowed the seed. And he said he understood the gospel but I didn't force him to make a decision. Let the Lord deal with him. Dear friend, consider your ways. We are so busy in our life. Very soon you will be gone and nothing you are going to carry. You will carry nothing. No matter what brand of perfumes you may, put, you may apply to your body, you will smell when you die. Can I hear an amen? amen. No matter what brand of shirt and pants you wear, you are going to go naked up or down. One lady um, came all the way from Belgium. Say, Pastor, I came all the way from Belgium so that you can pray for me. And yesterday, the boys and we were able to pray. What happened? A man went abroad to work. And what happened? Nobody knows whether he is dead or no phone calls. And somebody who is a stranger keeps calling once in a while and saying, Your son is dead. Your son is dead. Your son is dead. And they don't believe he's dead. They believe he's playing with him. What happened? No. And so, a man who went to make some riches, <coughs> look what happened to him now. I mean, being, being rich is not wrong. The Bible tells, admonish the rich to use their wealth for the ministry. Walk in wisdom. Redeeming the time with those that are without. While the house of the Lord lays waste and broken. You think building your ceiling is important? Now God is not saying you need to do something. Let's turn our Bible and see what God is speaking to you. Haggai hey chapter 1. Haggai hey chapter 1. After Zephaniah. Before Zechariah. That is third from the uh, last of the Old Testament. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. Then Zechariah. And then Haggai hey from back. Haggai chapter 1, and see what these people were doing. And this is exactly what is happening in this day and age in the lives of Christians. If you want to redeem your time, you better consider your ways. 
Verse number 1 through 8, if we read, the Bible says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, now, I'm not saying, thus says the Lord. Who is saying? The Lord is saying. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O E, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. A drink, but ye are not filled with drink. A clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Have you met any Christians who are not satisfied in their life with what they have? This is exactly you. How's your life, brother? Okay. Any good thing in your job? Not so much. How's the business going? Oh, no, no, not at all. Why? Pastor will ask for tithes. Come on, man. I've never asked you for anything. Why do you want to live in such a way of hypocritic life? You make God like a beggar. Christian life is to be satisfied and to be content and to be happy in Christ. I am thankful to God for all that God has given me. Amen. God ought to be glorified by our words and by our actions. And by our thoughts. Sometimes you may not even speak with your words. But God hears what you spoke in your heart. You clothe you but there is none warm. He that earneth wages. Earneth wages to put it into a bag. With holes. Look at your pocket today. You have a hole in your pocket? Hole in your wallet? Hole in your purse? Hole in your handbag? May not be literally a hole. Your hand doesn't reach there. <laughs> Consider your ways. The house of the Lord lays waste. Is it a time for you? I'm not saying, let's, let's come on man, let's buy a property. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about souls. Look what the Bible says. Go up. Verse number 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain. And Jesus said, go ye into all the world. And then do what? And bring woods. And build a house. Do you understand this? We are co-laborer with Christ. Jesus said, I will build my church. But he said, you go out and bring. Bringing in the sheaves. Go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build a house. And I will take pleasure in it. You know why God created you and me? Thou has created for thy pleasures. And how do you and I give pleasure to God? By doing what his word says. You know when you go 
after you know the first uh, i went for fishing the first time i went for fishing got nothing second time nothing third time nothing and the fourth time you see feel like something got stuck and i pulled and there was this the most ugliest fish that i ever got i was not catching a pig but it was a fish that made the sound like a pig and so we got it out and and made a curry out of it made ambotik and it really tasted good what am i saying if you just put some hook there one day you will catch some fish it's okay whatever fish but you will catch some fish what i'm trying to say is if you go after a soul one day you will win a soul and then what we did is we just hook down and then one more hook and another hook with bait and put tak 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 keep on getting fishes now then one day i went and i bought a net for 900 rupees in giri you know that guys weights and stuff. so i bought a net for 900 rupees and then we took and just flung into the river and caught 70 fish at a time if you just throw one day one day one day one fine day you will catch your soul go out into the mountains dear beloved go out into the mountains and bring some wood <coughs> Will you take a challenge today and say I want to give pleasure to God? I want to go out and try to witness to somebody or I'll pass out a gospel track at least one. You know what? Passing out one track a day can you get you are reaching 365 souls in a year. Wow, that sounds amazing. If you pass one track on Sunday, you are passing out 52 tracks on every year. What am I trying to tell you is, let's get into the business of the Father. And by the way, it's not about building church; it's about winning souls. It's okay if these people get saved and go somewhere, but at least they are getting saved and going to heaven. And the Lord says, "Consider your ways. Redeem the time, for the days are evil. Redeem." Let's awake from sleep. Let us wake up from our sleep, and let us walk honestly. and let us give pleasure to god let us walk in wisdom to them that are without redeeming the time and may our words be seasoned with salt if christ rules your heart he will rule your tongue amen for out of the abundance of heart your mouth speaketh Oh I didn't mean it no you meant it that's why you said it that's what was in your heart out of the abundance of heart the mouth speaketh if Christ rules our heart he will rule our words so let us choose our words let us choose our ways consider your ways my beloveds consider Shall we pray?